This program is proudly brought to you by Volkswagen. Uton Hague, the home of Volkswagen in South Africa and the starting point for round five of the South African Rally Championship. Hannes Krobler, last year's winner of the event, has been given the honor of carrying number one on his Sentra's doors. Drawn second, Jan Habich and Douglas Judd. And third on the road, the crew they all want to beat, Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi. Jan Habich has worked hard to improve the performance of his golf for this event. We've had quite a disappointing season up until now, uh, but we've done some major testing and, and, and uh, modifications to the car, and hopefully um, we've sorted all the problems and it'll go a, bit, a lot better. Habich follows Hannes Krobler from the start at the Jutenhaeg Town Hall to stage one, an all-tar stage in an industrial area on the outskirts of town. Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi look set to keep their championship status with five wins from five starts this season. Add to that the three events they won at the end of last year and the Toyota crew have notched up seven wins in a row. After a pleasing third overall on the Sassel Rally last month, Enzo Kuhn once again replaces Billy Rotenbach behind the wheel of the Hyundai Accent. Uh, we're waiting for uh, proper gearbox and further engine developments and we're actually running standard gearbox at the moment which, which makes the car difficult to drive but uh, reliability seems to be the thing that pulled us through so more or less the same uh, strategy on this event. Um, we won't be going for an all-out win but definitely to be consistent and uh, hopefully score a podium finish. Car number one in stage number one, and Hannes gets right down to business on this 4.4 kilometer all tar stage. Running the Sentra on full slick racing tires, Hannes uses the four wheel drive capabilities to slide the Sentra through the bends, scoring a time of 2 minutes and 33 seconds. Flying the Volkswagen flag in Class A, Habich and Judd enter stage one. The four-wheel drive Golf has a completely redesigned back suspension, a previous weakness on the Golf. Serge and Vito get right down to business and push the Conquest through the stage in a winning time of 2 minutes and 27 seconds. to the Hyundai with Enzo Kuhn and Johan Silum. Enzo was asked to drive the car on the Sassel Rally when Billy Rotenbach was forced to step down due to business commitments. Once again, a similar situation has the young ex-Ford works driver behind the wheel of the Class A Hyundai. Enzo has been campaigning for a drive in the super competitive Asian Rallying Championship. The young Pretoria-based driver has impressed team managers in the Formula 2 series, but needs sponsorship to take his talents further. finish the stage in 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Their time is a full 9 seconds off the winning time, but the accent is far from fully developed and the team look forward to a more competitive future. Leon Boerte and Francois Jordan in the X-Works Nissan Sentra, which Leon has privatized and brought back into the sport. The sixth car on the road is the Sentra of Nuna de Cunha and Francois Pretorius. Brady Dabner and Guy Hodgson bring up the rear of the Class A cars in the second Toyota Conquest. Um, 
the two Class C Toyotas of Etienne Lawrence and Glenn Derman are once again pitted against each other in this super competitive class. Chad van der Valt and Cindy Harding had a disappointing Sassel Rally debut in their new Formula 2 based Class B car. They'll be up against Tony Ball and Marty Ulifier in a similar car out for the first time on this rally. From the tight tar stage in town, the cars move to stage two, a fast gravel stage 10.4 kilometers in length, which moves the rally out towards the Addo Elephant Park. Hannes Krobler gets a second back from Surge, covering the distance in a time of 4 minutes and 30 seconds, and putting pressure on the Toyota crew in the early stages of the rally. Stage 3, a short 5km sprint stage, has the top crews fighting for seconds on the scoreboard, with no team able to dominate. Habich and Judd find themselves hot on the pace of Damso and Hrobler. The improvements to the golf obviously working well on these smooth, fast roads. Surge opens the conquest to its limits pushing the motor into the rev limiter through all six gears. Flying with the cars proved impossible as the speeds moved up to the 200 km per hour mark. Visibly slower than the first three cars, Enzo leads the second phase of Class A crews into the stage. They complete the stage 14 seconds slower than the Damso Conquest. Leon Boerter's Centra Coupe shows good form on these quick roads. The privateers just seven seconds off the leader's base. Charles von der Waalt and Cindy Harding find themselves swapping seconds with the leading Class C car of Lawrence and Paisley. The new Class B car has the speed and power. What it lacks at this stage is hours on the road and the development that goes with it. Tony Ball, a long-time campaigner in Class B, and looking good in his new Formula 2 base car. Unfazed by all this new competition, Paolo Piazza Musso still leads the Class B championship in the Uno Turbo. He has Nick Haddon navigating for him. Also a part of the Class B battle, Brian Martin and Barry White in the only Class B Toyota. Trevor Graham and Peter Chadwick find themselves in a one-on-one -on -one Class C fight with a local crew of Keith Coleman and Eva Koch. From the Addo Flatlands, the crews face the long 48.5 km stage through the Zuberg Pass. We're in with Hannes Krobler and Pierre Orries in the centre. The crews work hard through the stage with blind rises and fast sweeps appearing without warning. The choice of soft compound tyres proves to be a mistake on this long stage, the Nissan understeering badly as the tyres lose their traction. Cattle in the road become an added problem for the leading car. Habich and Judd pushing the golf hard through the valley. As the stage climbs up out of the valley onto the pass, Hannes visibly fights the car through the bins. Spectating at the top of the mountain, Saro von der Merve and touring car champion Mike Briggs. Serge and Vito appear next on the road, having passed the Volkswagen of Javi Hinjad. The Golf was forced to stop when a shredded left front tyre started to tear the bodywork from the car, the Volkswagen team losing close to five minutes in the process and dropping well down on the scoreboard. The Hyundai broke a brake pipe on the stage, leaving Enzo with only the handbrake to slow the car over this treacherous pass. They also lost time and dropped to 11th place overall. 
Johannes Krobler finishes the stage, having lost nearly a minute to the Toyota crew of Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi. Hannes's choice of tyres has an effect, given Serge a welcome break on the scoreboard. With Harbich now well down the field, Serge could afford to back off the pace slightly over the final two stages of the day. The scoreboard, after seven stages, sees Brady Dabner up to third place overall and Lawrence and Paisley in an excellent fourth in their Class C conquest. With Jan Habich and Douglas Judd down in eighth spot, the Toyota crew once again become the team to beat. Serge, a lead in day one, just over a minute. A good rally for you so far? Well, the whole event uh, until that long stage, um, between Hannes and I, we were sharing stages, like a second apart for a couple of stages and uh, the long stage we decided well we had to get a lead a bit of there because nine seconds after a couple of stages was a bit tight and uh, we had a good stage a clean stage unfortunately Hannes uh, sort of ran out of tires I think he went for a soft compound and that's where his problem was having been regrouped overnight Serge and Vito now take the lead on the road with Hannes and Pierre following them into the stages Stage eight, the first stage of the second day, is a car park stage at Kings Beach. Serge takes things easy through the stage, clocking a time of just over a minute, rather saving the conquest for the forest stages that lie ahead. Hannes Krobler enjoys these Gymkhana type stages and completes the stage in 58 seconds, taking back a few seconds from the leading Toyota. Dabner and Hodgson take a wide line through the course and pay the price of time lost to the leaders. It takes some skill to get the four-wheel drive cars round the tight course, and Goethe, like Dabner, gets things a bit wrong. Jard von der Volt and Cindy Harding find themselves on the road to nowhere as the golf glides to a stop with a broken side shot. The crew are forced to push the golf out of the stage, obviously disappointed at relinquishing the Class B lead to the Uno of Paolo Piazza Musso and Nick Haddon. Stage 9 incorporates a part of the old Samcor test track and Serge is able to once again take control of the rally. They complete the stage a full 10 seconds quicker than the Nissan crew of Hannes Kobler and Pierre Aris. On stage 10, a long 43-kilometer run through the Safkol forests, the Toyota picks up a puncture in the left rear tire. Serge completes the stage without stopping but loses time in the process. Hannes regains 13 seconds from Serge. Third place Brady Dabner loses valuable time as he spins the Bankfin Toyota at the spectator point. Lawrence and Paisley lost time in stage 10 with a flat tire and bent lower control arm but remain the Class C leaders. Glenn Derman and Dave Levkovitz had failed to match the pace of Lawrence and Paisley, their conquest down on power since the opening stages of the rally. Despite this, they had stayed in the top 10 overall and second in their class. Running down in the field among the Class C cars, Jan Habich and Douglas Judd had mounted an amazing recovery. They posted the fastest time on the stage, their pace shooting them up the scoreboard. Keith Coleman and Eva Koch, having started in 21st position, are now well into the top 10 and third in Class C. They have Trevor Graham and Peter Chadwick right behind them, together on the road and on the scoreboard. Both crews find themselves winning seconds on one stage and losing them on the next. 
Leading Class B almost unchallenged, Paolo Piazza Musso and Nick Haddon have a pack of Class C cars ahead of them on the scoreboard. Even further down the field, but still going strong, Alan Mitrovic and Mike Burrows in their Class C golf. Class D cars remain in the rally after 10 stages, and they are currently led by Pierre Hoerson and Ozzy Dior. The two stages preceding the midday regroup saw little change in time between Serge and Honnis. A minute and four seconds separate the Toyota and the Nissan. Brady Dabner's third place is under threat from the charging Volkswagen Golf, while Leon Boerter remains intact, although surrounded by a bunch of very competitive Class C cars. Jan Habich had used the five morning stages to good effect, climbing up to fourth place overall and within striking distance of Brady Dabner and Guy Hodgson. Jan, a good recovery today. You're just 40 odd seconds off Brady and you're going well. We've had no problems with the car so far, and unfortunately, in the very long stage, we had a puncher about 20 kilometers from the end, and we lost uh, at least five minutes on the front runners. So that was very unfortunate because the car's going extremely well, but we've managed to make up time and I think we, we're quite close to third position and we'll definitely try and take it on the next stage. Connor starts stage 13 with a telltale sign of trouble coming from the Sintra's exhaust. Jan and Douglas enter the 36 kilometer stage confident that over that distance they can take third place from Dabner and Hodgson. Jan shows his intentions from the word go as he powers the golf off the starting line. Some 12 kilometers into the stage, the golf passes the stranded Nissan crew of Hannes and Pierre standing on the side of the road. The Sentra had blown its motor, retiring the team and leaving Habich and Dabner now in a fight for second place. Ten kilometers later, a broken exhaust manifold suddenly robs the Golf of valuable horsepower, slowing the pace of the Golf and forcing Jan to nurse the Volkswagen to the finish. The crew finish the stage almost a minute slower than Damso and take only 26 seconds off Brady Dabner and Guy Hodgson. stages remaining, only stage 14 has the distance on which they can hope to take the second spot. Hubbard goes on to win that stage, pushing Dabner back to third place by 17 seconds. From the gravel forest roads, the cars move to the warmer shopping centre for a short and final all-tar stage. Serge takes no chances and has the conquest checked from top to bottom. The treaded off-road tyres are replaced with slick racing rubber. We join Serge and Vito for a hair-raising ride through this car park stage. A little bit wide, a little bit wide. Down the bottom. Right to left. 30 meters, 90 left. Into 90 left. Up there. 90 left over the up. Second one, 90 left. Right there. Yeah, yeah, left the corners left, left, left. arrive faster than the instructions can be called, and Serge makes his first and only mistake of the rally. Between the shades. Despite this, they lose only five seconds to Hubbard, who completes the 1.8 kilometer stage in a winning time of one minute and 44 seconds. The final results confirm eight wins in a row for Serge Damso and Vito Bonafidi. A well-earned second place for the Volkswagen crew of Habich and Judd. Lawrence and Paisley won Class C, Piazza Musso and Haddon Class B, and Kursen and De Jong Class D. Serge, another one under the belt. Yes, um, it's very nice. Uh, they always welcome a uh, win and a national championship. And uh, it's a pity again for Hannes. I mean, he was the closest until the third, fourth stage from the end. But that's all about rallying. So now, you could almost wind the championship up in the next event, could you? Well, it depends. I think we need to win another one. 